I already talked about this movie on this channel. I put out an unscripted review of it after I'd seen it in the cinemas twice, but here I am, talking about it again just a few months later. What gives? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I was never happy with how that video turned out. You can tell throughout the whole thing that I am stretching myself to try and be more positive about the movie than I actually feel. And the observant amongst you will notice that I've not done a video like that since then. This film completely broke my enthusiasm for doing unscripted videos. I was always happy enough to do them before, but this made it feel like it was a failure. Like I was making work that wasn't up to any kind of standard. This movie made me feel like that. This movie hurt me. One of the problems with making content for YouTube is that once you've finished a video and it's out there in the world, then you're kind of stuck with it, mistakes and all. But so what? I mean, everyone makes mistakes, right? I mean, just this year alone, I've pronounced Cara Delevingne's name wrong, I put up a picture of an asexual flag when I should have used an aromantic one, and I didn't learn that Mary Shelley was bisexual until two weeks after I finished a video about how gay her book is. But this is different. I can fix this. I can fix this! <laughs> King of the Monsters is basically not very good. It's an overly long film of too many people staring at screen saying terrible dialogue that occasionally gives way to big CGI monster fight scenes. It's a very tiring experience to have to pay attention to, with lots of scenes taking place in the middle of dark storms with flashing lights that honestly make me want to say be very careful with this film if you have epilepsy. And you come out of the whole thing just feeling kind of drained. The government are having hearings into the damage caused in the previous movie, which are put to one side when our brooding, violent hero has to fight against an alien at the behest of a crazed genius with red hair. And is this movie just Batman v Superman? Wait. It opens on a ground-level perspective of the destructive climax of the previous movie. We get glimpses of a female hero throughout the movie who shows up to help in the climax, and the alien dies only to have their return from the dead teased at the end of the movie! Release the Angiras cut, you cowards! There is one major positive I can say for this movie. The monsters look really great. Like, they have never been quite so wonderfully realised. Look at Mothra! Look at Rodan! Look at this weird mammoth gorilla guy! And look at King Ghidorah. Ghidorah is really this movie's biggest saving grace. For the first time, he moves in a way that makes him feel monstrous and dangerous instead of a bit silly. Each of his heads have their own unique personalities and he is truly incredible to see. A lot of the enjoyment I get out of this depiction of the character comes from how they brought him to the screen. They use performance capture with a different person playing each of the heads, and that translates really beautifully to the final product, bringing one of my favourite monsters to life more impressively than ever before, but in a way that also feels like it pays tribute to the soupmation of the classic films. And watching these monsters displaying these personalities while they're beating the ever-loving snot out of each other is highly enjoyable, and a big part of what made me want to say that I liked this movie in the first place. And when you get right down to it, isn't that why Godzilla movies exist? I mean, the chief appeal is surely the monster fights. So if the movie does deliver pretty well on those, then shouldn't that be enough? The thing is, I wouldn't mind if it was just that the dialogue is this bad. Ghidorah, the one who's many. Ghidorah? This is the gonorrhea. Huh? Ghidorah! Or that Vera Farmiga's villain plan is utterly nonsensical. Yes, wherever the Titans go, life follows, triggered by their radiation. They are the only thing that can reverse the destruction that we started. The kaiju will fix climate change? All that the movie's idea about how the monster hierarchy works is based on bad animal science that's long since been disproved. All packs, from wolves to killer whales, they all respond directly to an alpha. This isn't true! You should know this! You study wolves! I could forgive all that stuff and just enjoy this movie for the big dumb monster fights if it were just those kind of typical monster movie flaws. I mean, it's a Godzilla film, adjust your expectations accordingly. But, and this is an important but, they use a nuclear bomb to save the day in this movie. A nuclear bomb. In a Godzilla movie. 
this Godzilla movie uses a nuclear bomb for a positive. A nuclear bomb to save the day in Godzilla. I can't. I, I just can't. For context here, partway through the movie, Godzilla is seemingly killed by a weapon known as the Oxygen Destroyer, which is already a thing that makes me mad and I'm going to need to circle back to it in a bit. And the heroes get led by Mothra to a path into the Hollow Earth, where they find Godzilla in... Atlantis, I guess? He's gone there to recover using the high radiation levels in the area, but they need Godzilla back right away to stop Ghidorah. So Dr. Serizawa sacrifices himself by taking a nuclear bomb to Godzilla and setting it off. I have talked previously about Godzilla's deep-seated origins in criticisms of nuclear war. The whole foundation of the franchise comes nine years in the wake of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it's decrying the use of weapons of mass destruction. So it should go without saying that to use one of them for a positive is undoubtedly missing the point. But here we are, 65 years later, and... Ah! So this is an American adaptation of a Japanese property based on America's immoral use of nuclear weapons that has its only Japanese character use a nuclear bomb for moral purposes. So this is very bad, right? The American Godzilla movie working to reclaim the use of nuclear weapons and using its Japanese character, the one who is named after the most anti-nuclear character from the original film, who carries a reminder of Hiroshima with him at all times to justify it doing so. It feels like Mike Doherty, the film's writer and director, understood a huge part of the appeal of Godzilla with his use of the monsters in the fights. He is definitely a Godzilla fan, probably a bigger one than me, if that were a thing that could be measured in an objective way, and he puts his passion for it very visibly into the work. But it just feels like when it came to the politics of the story, he didn't quite have it right. As a prime example, let's circle back around to that Oxygen Destroyer. The Oxygen Destroyer is the emotional crux of the original Gojira. The Dr. Serizawa of that film has made a weapon more powerful and deadly than any nuclear weapon, and they come to realise that it is the only way to stop Godzilla as he is destroying Japan. Now, I realise that this may sound like the same thing as what I'm complaining about, using a weapon of mass destruction to save the day, but the framing of the issue is very different. In the original film, choosing to use a weapon like this is a heartbreaking, devastating thing to have to do. It really feels like there's no other possible choice, and Dr. Serizawa destroys his plans and sacrifices his own life rather than let it ever be used again. As opposed to King of the Monsters, where it's their first choice and played off to be a badass cool moment. So the reason they call this weapon in King of the Monsters the Oxygen Destroyer is just to be a reference. Same as calling a character Dr. Serizawa, or having Zhang Ziyi play twins to look like the Shobujin from Mothra. It's meant to get a reaction of, hey, that's like the thing in the original. But when the thing in the original is the dreaded weapon that should never be used again, and the very clear centre of the movie's moral message, then you need to live up to that. And this movie just doesn't. It's this mangling of the message of Godzilla that turns this movie in my head from a flawed but entertaining film to a bad film that actively hurts the legacy of the franchise it's a part of. I, I just can't bring myself to defend a film that works to say that nuclear bombs can be okay when they never can be. It's... it's just not right. And it's really disappointing to see. So... If I don't think the movie is that great, and I have a lot of problems with how the political message reads, then why did I say that I liked it in my original video? Why was I not just honest about the way that it made me feel? Well, I've been giving it some thought, and I think I figured out the reason why. I love Godzilla. I am a Godzilla fan. I, I know, this might come as a bit of a shock. <laughs> but to explain what I'm thinking here, I kind of need to let you know what it's like to be a Godzilla fan in the UK. It's kind of not easy. So, I first got into Godzilla before the release of the 2014 Legendary film. I'd seen bits and pieces of the old movies on TV here and there, and I'd seen the 98 film, and I liked that. I know, sacrilegious Godzilla opinion, but it, it's not that bad, really. But yeah, I hadn't seen a lot of Godzilla, and I had plenty of free time on my hands in 2014, so I decided that I was going to watch all of them before I saw the new film. 
And this is where the problems begin. You can't legally purchase copies of the Godzilla films in the UK. They just don't sell them. There's a lot of licensing issues and Toho Studios are notoriously bad at letting anyone touch their films. There are a couple of exceptions, like you can get King Kong vs. Godzilla, the 98 Godzilla, and Gojira, but that one's only on DVD, and what am I? A savage! So, if I was going to watch these films, I was going to need to use, shall we say, alternative methods. Now, at their best, these alternative methods are unreliable, and at their worst, oh, the malware! Still, I watched almost all of them. I still haven't seen Vs. Megalon or Vs. the Smog Monster. And I loved them in all their ridiculous nonsense. And then I saw the 2014 film and I loved that too. So at this point, I was officially a Godzilla fan. I was looking for any new Godzilla content that I could lap up. And actually, there's been a fairly decent amount. There was Shin Gojira and the Netflix anime ones. But there was still no legitimate way for me to watch the majority of the films in the series, and that bummed me out. So, in the build-up to King of the Monsters coming out, I started to get excited. I was there for every new piece of promotional material, I and mean, every trailer had me ridiculously hyped. I was precisely this movie's target audience, purely because it was new Godzilla that I could go out to the movies and see, and then a few months later buy on an overpriced steelbook Blu-ray and take home and watch there. I really was that easy to please. But then, when the movie turned out like this, I couldn't quite accept that. I twisted it around in my head trying to make sense of it. I, I, I couldn't have not liked it. It was Godzilla, it, it must have been good. All these people who were saying it wasn't good were wrong. They were stupid, they just, they don't understand. They're not Godzilla fans. They they haven't been there like I have. They just don't get it. And thank Mothra, I am not 15 anymore. When I was younger, I didn't have a lot of friends. And I went looking for solace in movies and TV shows. And I would often get more invested in these things than I ought to have done. I let them matter to me so much because I didn't really have anything else. So when people would say things against the stuff I liked, I got mad. I had to let them know exactly why their opinions were wrong. And if they then disagreed with that, they were idiots and I had to insult them to let them know. Especially if they were women. Because as all teenage boys know, women can never be right about anything. I had to assert my position as the superior fan of the thing. I think this is a common phase for people to go through. Teenagers are honestly kind of stupid and self-centered in a way that makes them angry at anyone who disagrees with them about even the slightest of things. If there's any teenagers watching, I'm sorry, but you are. You'll realize it in a few years once you've grown out of it. Of course, some people never grow out of it, and still to this day tell people on the internet to kill themselves if they disagree with them about a movie. Thankfully, I don't think I ever told anyone to kill themselves, but when I stop and think about the person that I used to be, I worry that I might have come close. I said and did things that I now look back on and regret, because they might have hurt people. And over what? A movie? A TV show? These things don't matter. I mean, obviously, they're still important to me. I didn't have a quiet emotional breakdown about a Godzilla movie for nothing, but they're not the only thing in my life, and I'm trying to focus on that. You can't just define your life around the media you consume. It's not healthy. Let people talk shit on the things you love. It's okay. You can still love it just as much. And if a new entry of the thing you love does something that you disagree with, say, for reasons of how it handles its politics, then that's okay too. You shouldn't take your anger out on the people who like it, or the people who made it. You just have to let it go, and move on. And goddammit, was this actually just another video about The Last Jedi again the whole time? I wish I could bring myself to like this film. Like I said, I'm rooting for basically everything with Godzilla in it. 
because it's been so hard to get access to most of the movies. But the good news is, they just became a lot more accessible. Thanks to the Criterion Collection releasing a 15 film box set of some of the earliest films of the series. The trouble is that having access to these films might now make my big flaw with this movie feel all the more apparent. Whoops! I am working on not letting my investment in the media that I watch take over my life. It's not always easy, but I feel like it's a pretty important thing to try to do. You don't have to make yourself like everything within a particular franchise. And if you don't like something, you can just move on. There'll always be a next thing that you do like eventually. Don't be like me and give yourself an emotional breakdown over a movie. I don't know. Maybe this bit's just a me problem. I... <laughs> I think this is... I think this might be leftover cobweb fluff from the last video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see me go on more depression-inspired thought spirals as a result of watching Godzilla movies, then maybe consider supporting my Patreon. That, that might be the best link to this I've ever done. For as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to my videos, plus exclusive content when I make it. For $5 a month or more, your name will appear in the credits, and there's other tiers where I will like read your name or send you a postcard, things like that. It, it'd be nice. I'd like it. Christmas is coming. I could do with the money. <laughs> Links in the etc. I would feel remiss if I didn't recommend Laura Crone's very Halloween special episode. It's a very moving piece about the grey areas where consent is no longer consent. It's much better than I can possibly describe. You should check it out. It's It might be her best work.